I mean, this is like an in-depth project. Project, make this yoke fit. I'm doing some really deep research here. Don't worry, I'm recording my findings. <laughs> I'm actually literally recording my findings. I'm so sorry if I hurt anybody's feelings, but I thought last year's was ugly. There, I said it, I'm sorry. If you knit it, I'm sure yours was really pretty though. <laughs> Just kidding. Hello and welcome to the Young Folk Knits Podcast. My name is Casey and this is episode 23. <laughs> Welcome to the Young Folk Knits podcast. If you're a returning viewer, then thanks for coming back to hang out with me again. And if you are a new viewer, then you are very welcome. This is a podcast where I chat mainly about knitting and whatever other craft is tickling my fancy at the moment. I also chat a bit about our small farm in Arkansas where we live in the foothills of the Ozarks where we keep beehives and chickens and love to spend as much time outside as possible. It is now the second week in September, and while I am so excited for fall, I mean, fall is 100% my favorite season. I also have a really sore throat. I get sick with allergies every fall. I have a really, really bad allergy to ragweed, which grows in abundance this time of year all over the place. So if I sound a little bit scratchy, that is why. Fall is really an exciting time for beekeepers though because while a lot of the honey is made during spring, which we call the spring honey flow, there's also a second wave of honey production, which is the fall honey flow. So of course, you know, we, we always think of spring as when the flowers bloom and pollen and nectar are flowing, and that is true. And that's definitely whenever some of my favorite honey is made. But as the temperatures cool, there is a whole nother set of plants that really favor the cooler season of fall. So the bees get another chance at nectar pollen, all of the things they need to make honey. And it's really interesting because fall honey tastes completely different than spring honey. I love spring honey because there's a really fruity flavor to our honey. We have peach trees. We actually have apple trees, pear trees. We have blueberry bushes. And it just gives it this really light, fruity flavor along with all of the clover. We have fields and fields of, of clover. So spring honey is really my favorite, but fall honey has a completely different flavor, hints of different flowers. And so I'm excited to get ready to harvest some fall honey coming up soon. And then we will be helping the bees prepare for winter where they will not be producing honey. Instead, they will be eating the honey that they have stored and we have left for them to make it through the winter. So yes, busy times here at Honey Folk Bee Farm. But I have also been knitting and lately I have been a little bit in a frenzy over yoke sweaters. <laughs> I have had little success in getting yoke sweaters to fit me. And the reason for that is because I don't have broad shoulders. I have, you know, very average shoulders. And this part of my body is not thick. It's not thick. Okay, so when you take the measurements though for my upper bust and my full bust, there's a really big difference and that can cause sweater fit issues big time. <laughs> 
I really need a smaller size for this area. But then for my bust, I need a bigger size. And then for my waist, I need to go back down to the smaller size. So what I have been doing is just knitting the bigger size in general. That works great for a drop shoulder or a set in sleeve. Anything like that going up a size really isn't an issue to accommodate my bust measurements. But for a yoke sweater, that just has not worked for me. I think if I had wider shoulders, it would work, but it does not work for me. <laughs> So, I am in Operation Make a Yoke Fit. I have two yoke sweaters that I'm currently knitting on. One is the Alpen Glow Sweater by Andrea Mowry, and the other is the Easy V by Caitlin Hunter, or Boyland Knitworks, on Instagram. And I am doing some things different this time to see if I can get a really good customized fit for my sweater. So let's jump in and get started talking about sweater yokes. You got the time I'd like to stay a while Do you remember what I said last time we met? Would you like to move A little closer now I'd like to be as close to you As I can get if I could suck a time something y'all have seen a lot of lately and I'm sorry it is my Alpen Glow sweater and I am at the point where the pattern calls for me to separate for the sleeves and continue on working the body so I have knit the size 5 sweater a lot of times I'll knit a size 6 in sweaters but as I mentioned earlier I just haven't had good success with yoke sweaters fitting it's always too big so this time i've gone down to a size five in both of the sweaters i'm knitting so since i've hit the measurement and the row that andrea mowry suggests splitting for the sleeves at what i'm going to do is steam block what i have so far so that it will lay nicely and lay like it will once it is completely finished then i'm going to put my sweater on some cords to hold the stitches so that i can try it on and I will see if this is looking like it's going to be a good fit at this point. Like it is at a good spot for me to separate for the sleeves. So one thing you do with this sweater is you cast on right here. And then you go ahead and knit your sweater. And at the end of the sweater, you're supposed to go back, pick up the stitches to do your neckline and knit your whole neckline and then fold it over and sew it down. As you can see, I've already done that. And the reason I did that is because I think it will drastically affect the fit of a sweater once it's finished. So I don't want to be trying on and measuring and doing all those things to try to make this sweater fit when it doesn't even have some of the design features that it will at the end of the sweater. So I went ahead and, you know, picked up my stitches and knit the collar, sewed it down. So it is now from here down completely finished the yoke according to the pattern. Let's see if this pattern hits me right where it should or if I'm gonna need to make some adjustments. Let's go block it. Thank you. 
on because I think I need to do one more repeat before I split for the sleeves because I don't want it to be too tight in my underarms. Um, I do think it's going to be pretty wide. It's plenty big. But yeah, I think I want it to be a bit longer before I split. So yay for steam blockers. All right, I am going to knit another repeat on this and I'm also gonna work a little bit on my Easy V and I've also got a few other projects that I'm working on. So I will see y'all in a little bit. <laughs> hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey darling, we could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count, honey Come on now and take my hand oh, Hey, darling I love it when it's me and you on the road with a couple of tunes in a car for two Hey darling You know we're gonna have a really good time Driving in the middle of the night when the stars are bright Pack our bags and get in that car Real far. Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life, I wanna make it count Honey, come on now and take Side is so pretty with the wind blowing in your hair. We can look back someday, baby. Don't you understand that we only get one life? I wanna make it count, honey. Come on now and take my hand. Yeah, we only get one life. I wanna make it count, honey. Come on now and take. y'all it is now not tomorrow but a few days later it is Wednesday so after trying my yoke on I did decide to go ahead and do the repeat one more time and I think that that was the right decision so I have now split for the the sleeves I have them on hold and I am working the body. I'm gonna work a few more inches of the body and then I'm going to go ahead and start on the sleeves. That will give me a better idea of fit and I can make a better decision on how long I want to make it. So that is my plan. So I'm in a group with some other podcasters and I asked them their opinion on whether a yoke has a better fit in their opinion on their bodies if it is a little bit longer or a little bit shorter and they said they prefer longer rather than shorter because you don't want it to be too tight under the arms it can definitely cause pilling and it can pull and make the sweater not look quite right so that cinched it for me i decided to go ahead and knit my yoke 
longer. As you know, I did. And I think that's the right decision. I'm very happy with it. I'm just gonna knit away on this. And while I'm working on this, I've also been working on a second yoke because I wanted to kind of be in the yoke fitting frame of mind at the same time. And that is my Easy V by Caitlin Hunter from Boyland Knitworks. So I had started knitting this one in the size six and as i knit the size five in my other sweater i realized that i think that's a better fit for my shoulders and above the bust so i ripped back again i'm back to the point where i'm working my color work chart now you can see i've started adding in my first color this is knit with rambouillet and spin cycle it's so nice so i want to kind of work on this at the same time as the alpen glow so that i can really figure out what works best for me with yokes i mean this is like an in-depth project project make this yoke fit i'm doing some really deep research here don't worry i'm recording my findings <laughs> i'm actually literally recording my findings anyway okay moving on because that is a v-neck and has some interesting shaping all the way around then it is going to be a little bit different than the circular yoke but i think i can take some things from the alpen glow and apply it to the easy v we're gonna see so besides working on those sweaters i actually cast on something new and finished it this past week so here is my Sophie scarf. This is a DK weight pattern by the, not the Petite Knitter, by Petite Knits. So I actually decided to hold some fingering weight yarn double. I only used half a ball. I still have 58 grams of yarn left. So I used Emma's yarn. What was this? Is this the silky one? The silky something base. And this is the color Drops of Jupiter and it is gorgeous. So I mainly knit this to wear in my hair. I love wearing a hair scarf or a headband or just tying my hair up. And I think it was, I've just seen so many pictures of this lately. I thought it was so cute. So this is an absolutely amazing stash buster. Just to be on the safe side though, I would say I used half a skein of yarn. I made the smaller size. The bigger one I'd say you would at least need three quarters of a skein of yarn. For, if not possibly a whole skein this super squishy garter stitch and I blocked mine and I opened up the garter stitch because I wanted it to have as much drape as possible which it definitely does so I'm going to show you a picture of how I wear it in my hair but I also think it's super cute to wear around your neck If you got the time, I'd like to stay a while Do you remember what I said last time we met? Would you like to move a little closer now? I'd like to be as close to you as I can get if I could stop the time, I sure would In this moment, I really wish I could Do you feel the same way as I do? So yes, I think this would make an amazing gift. I'm actually making one for my mom right now that matches her socks that I've made her. And I'm making it out of some yarn that has got silk and merino in it from the Farmer's Daughter Fibers. I'm going to hold it double. Also, I think how cute it is to tie your hair up and wear it like this. I just really like it. It's very versatile. So this is the smaller size. The bigger size I think would be super cute wrapped double and tied around your neck like an ascot. The Caddy Jacks ladies, <laughs> they have got the that, that hashtag going, how do you ascot? So yeah, that's how I ascot. So I also have a half finished object to share with y'all. I have been doing a test knit for Hannah G Knits. She has a podcast as well. And these are the, whoops, 
And these are the back to school socks from the back to school sock set. So you can choose to make these with a ruffle, which are absolutely adorable, or you can do it without a ruffle, which I did because I was knitting these in a tweed sock base and I thought these might be a little bit more wearable for her. So I knit these in some Woolberry Fiber Co yarn I had. It was a collective color and it is on the Berry Tweed base. And for my toes and heels, I used a red Naughty Pine Fiber Co. So these are ribbed, which makes the fit amazing. And then they have this really sweet folded cuff, which I absolutely love. I really would love to make a pair of these for each of my children, which is my plan. The fit with the ribbing is just so good that I think I think that they all need a pair. So she is anxiously awaiting her second sock, which I have started, but who knows when I will finish. <laughs> I'll have to hurry up before she outgrows them. Anyway, absolutely love these. They are a hit. So I'll let y'all know for sure whenever these come out, but I know they're coming out soon. So keep an eye out for these. Awesome pattern, Hannah. Thank you for letting me test. Martina from We Grow Wild, which I love her podcast. She is doing a shall we shawl knit along. And so since I finished a few test knits, I thought I would get my pressed flowers shawl out and work on that a bit. So I've got that ready. I'm gonna get going with this again, hopefully. I just signed up for a test knit for Sorry Nordland. So I'm also gonna need to start that and it's got a lot of cabling in it lofty plans I have that may not come to fruition. That's all I'm going to chat about as far as what I am currently knitting on, but I do have some plans for some things that are starting very soon that I'm excited to share with you guys. So Pearl Soho recently contacted me and told me that they are going to be hosting a bandana cow knit along starting in October and there will be more details on that shortly but their bandana cowl is the pattern that is going to be knit for knit along and they very kindly sent me a few different colors in their plenty base this color is called reed gray and this is a new color that isn't available yet but it's going to be very soon it's called plenty gray pearl but in my opinion it has this really beautiful mushroomy purple in fact, when I looked at it, I would have called it a dusty purple color, not a gray color. So the Plenty Base is an Aran weight yarn, and it's definitely, you know, a good thick Aran weight, I would say for sure. It's extra fine merino, and it is so incredibly soft. Like, it is soft and squishy and heavenly. So I'm going to be making two bandana cowls, one out of each of these colors, but there's going to be a new pattern for the bandana cowl showing um, stripes and color blocking. It looks pretty good. It's going to be a, a new update to their pattern. I've knit the Pearl Soho bandana cowl before and it is not take long. It does have some short rows in it, wraps and turns, but there's great tutorials and I actually love doing short rows. I love wraps and turns. I like them better than German short rows. So I think it's fun. The other thing that they sent me was some yarn support for the Stephen West MKAL Mystery Knit Along, which is this year is called the Twists and Turns Shawl. So what we know for sure is that it has cables in it and you need two fingering skeins of two different colors and then one accent color. So I picked out my colors from Pearl Soho's Linen Quill Base and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna be using. All right, first up is Kiln Red. It is this beautiful brick orangey red color. Okay, next up, Rose Granite. And last, Stillwater Blue. So these are my three colors. I am very happy about these colors. I love them. And I think they'll make a really fun cabled Stephen West shawl. Stephen West designs, I either love them or hate them. 
no shade against his designing. I love that there's a variety of patterns for different people to choose from. His Vertices Unite, possibly my favorite thing I've ever knit. I love it. There's a lot of different shawls that he has that I want to knit so bad. Exploration Station, that was one of the MKALs one year. Or I guess I should call it an MCAL mystery knit along. I love Seriously Holy. I want to make that shawl really bad. I love his Pinguono. Is that how you say it? I love it. But I'll just be honest. Unpopular opinion here. I'm so sorry if I hurt anybody's feelings, but... I thought last year's M. Cowell shawl was ugly. There, I said it. I'm sorry. If you knit it, I'm sure yours was really pretty, though. <laughs> Just kidding. <gasps> Not really, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah personal opinion different strokes for different folks it just was not my pattern i thought it looked like a circus tent i loved it up until the the last section i did not like the stripes at the end i think that's what did it for me the shrimp eye cords <laughs> weren't my favorite but they were still cute but it was the stripes at the end i just did not like it so i would knit that shawl but i would definitely do a different border like maybe garter stitch or something i don't know but don't hate me i just do not like it however i think it would be very fun to do an mcal i love so many of his patterns and i think that these very neutral classic colors will kind of tone down <laughs> whatever it is this year so i'm very excited for this and i will share with y'all my weekly progress on the MCAL and I think a lot of y'all will be knitting it along with me. I've seen so many pictures of color palettes already picked out. I love it. Okay, last thing I want to show y'all that I got in the mail this week is a new book that's coming out by Charlotte Stone and this is the Charming Color Work Socks. So this has 25 different color work socks in it and they're adorable. I want to knit so many of them. Isn't it great? A few things that I want to point out that I absolutely love is that at the beginning of the book, she has a whole section on sizing, which I think is awesome and I wanted. She has a section on gauge for perfect fitting socks. And then she has all about floats, color dominance what else choosing colors then care of your socks afterwards like blocking mending washing it's worth it to get this book just for that i wasn't sure what pattern i wanted to knit first but then i saw this one and it is on i can't even i cannot even with the cuteness look at these chicken socks Okay, so yeah, there's chickens, which are amazing, first of all. But look at the egg yolks on the toes. I love it. <laughs> so thank you so much for sending me this book. <laughs> okay, last on my list, I need to announce the winner of the giveaway for the Oh Honey Socks, which is a pattern by my friend Anina. She is also a podcaster, and she creates beautiful patterns. She's like the sock queen. I don't know how she finishes so many socks. So I've been having a little bit of trouble with the YouTube random comment pickers. Um, if anyone has a really good one that they could suggest, I would love that. Please suggest it for me. I don't know. I've been having a little bit of trouble. So what I did was I literally just went to the video and opened up the comments and I closed my eyes and scrolled and wherever it landed, that was the winner. So the winner is Erlinda and I'm not sure of a last name on that, but Erlinda, if I will put your profile picture and your comment on the screen. And if you will contact me at youngfolk.knits at gmail.com or on Instagram, then Anina can get your pattern to you. Thank you all so much for participating and 
I really appreciate all of your comments. I saw that I did have a few new subscribers and I think that that is mainly thanks to Bethany from Well Loved Knits. Bethany, you are so, so sweet. Thank you for recommending the podcast. So if you're a new viewer, I hope that you'll stick around. If you enjoy my videos, then please like and subscribe and comment. Doing those things helps my channel out so much and it really helps me to be able to continue creating new video content. Thank y'all again for hanging out with me today. I'm hoping to do another knit and chat next week. So don't forget if you ever have any questions or topics you'd like me to chat about, you can leave them in the comments here or you can send them to me on Instagram. I hope that y'all are all really enjoying September and getting ready for fall. I know I am so excited. We had a morning, Monday morning I think it was, we got up and it was in the 50s and it was amazing. Of course it did get up to around 80 that day, but that was, cool and wonderful. There was no humidity and it felt like fall and I was so excited. Of course now it is back up in the 90s but I think hopefully all that will soon be coming to an end you know maybe by November. But yes I have hope that fall is coming now. So thanks for hanging out with me and we will chat soon. Happy knitting y'all!